Have you ever come to the game end screen and noticed, hey, the kills and the units lost between the two sites don't match up? Why is that? Well, that is what I'll be explaining to you today. The number one offender for this are off-map artillery strikes. Here I'm dropping the US Forces Time on Target Artillery. And then, taking a look at the match stats, you can see 228 damage, but zero kills being attributed to me from this strike. Also, the damage is badly incorrect. Infantry models have 80 health each, times 23 models lost, that should be 1840 damage at least from this strike. As another example, we have Ossia's Stuka Dive Bomb. Notice how this also neutralizes the sector that the enemy units are standing inside. But when we take a look at the scoreboard, we can see that the enemy has one sector captured, but not one lost, which they clearly did lose to the Stuka Dive Bomb. Also, no kills or damage attributed to me from this strike. You may have noticed that this strike caused a whole bunch of crawlers, so maybe their kills won't register for me until they've finished crawling, or maybe I'll be able to get some kills or damage by shooting at the crawlers with this conscript squad. But no, shooting at the crawlers does not result in any kills or damage, and the crawlers timing up by themselves also does not register on my scoreboard. So does this affect every commander ability? Well here we have the Soviet IL-2 precision bombing strike. And this one does register the correct amount of kills for me, so commander abilities with an on-map plane delivering the strike will work though the damage dealt is still not completely correct. But what about other on-map units delivering off-map artillery strikes? Will those count? Here we have the coordinated barrage from the Panzer Commander upgrade for OKW. You can see the kills register on the Panzer Fort itself, and of course that means they show up on the scoreboard as well. Here's a tricky one, an ambient building converted into a forward observation post by the British forces. Unlike the Panzer IV from earlier, this does not have a kill counter attached to it. But the kills still show up on the scoreboard. So basically if the artillery strike can be attributed to something that's on the map, it will register in the match stats. Also note how the artillery strikes that do not count on the match stats do not give experience kickers as troops die, and thus do not count towards command points. Speaking of kills getting attributed to a unit on field, what about a fringe case such as a plane crash? Well, you may have seen the XP kicker there, and yes, my plane getting shot down and crashing into enemy troops does result in kills for me. Here's another fringe case, a tank in the out of control death critical, crushing infantry. And yes, those do show up as kills for me in the match stats. Here we have the Roman candle or cooked off death critical, during which the Sherman runs over one model of infantry, and this kill does not register for me in the match stats. Those of you who are eagle-eyed will have seen a strange KD in the other direction here. That is caused by the second equal largest defender, USF Vehicle Crews. Notice no kills or deaths at the moment, but here we have a Sherman about to get blasted by a Panther. And now I have five units lost, whereas the opponent only has one unit killed. Exploring this further, I'm putting a two-man vehicle crew inside of an M20. And that shows up as only 3 losses instead of 5, so it does depend on the number of models inside the vehicle. And USF tanks that cannot be decrewed, such as the Pershing, only count as one unit lost. Tying with USF vehicle crews are S-mines. Here we have an enemy T-34 running over my S-mine field. And a full patch getting crushed counts as 16 units lost. This is unique to S-mines. Here I am running over a bunch of other mines and none of them result in a unit lost to the person who planted them. Even the Soviet PMD-6 anti-personnel mines, which appear to be the same as S-mines, but without the warning signs. Also if you cancel an S-mine patch early, that can result in a unit lost. Here's another case, a weapon team drops below the number of crew required to operate it. This instantly shows up as two units lost for me even though the weapon team member is still alive and on the map. And nothing changes once he has completed retreating off the map. For that kill to register for the opponent, they have to kill the retreating model. And this also takes me to three units lost, so a team weapon getting decrewed counts as a loss itself. A common myth is that wire results in kills or losses, but that is not the case. And it's the same story for sandbags, even ones that are currently in construction. That is because sandbags and wire count as world objects, and in the case of sandbags it's a good thing that they do, 
because if they belong to the enemy, you wouldn't be able to vault over them. Another question is what happens to models that die when a troop transport explodes? Unlike with USF vehicle crews, these kills will register for the opponent. And then there are the obvious ones, such as killing your own troops with a stray explosion, or airdropping them into the trees. So there you go, next time you're at the bottom of the scoreboards and your teammates are giving you a hard time, you can say hey, it's not me that's trash, it's the match stats that are trash. A special thank you goes out to my Patreon backers who helped me justify spending such a long time making these videos.